sampling. So we did talk about that we need sampling because we cannot study the whole of the population. Now if you can't study the whole population, that is every single unit, every single respondent, every single element that can be part of your study is your population. So anything, any individual, any event, any object that can be part of your study is your population. But it's not easy for anyone to study the whole population. So that's why we do sampling. And what is sampling? Drawing out a sample from the population. And the process is referred to as sampling. Now there are different sampling techniques and sampling. We have probability sampling. And we've got non-probability sampling. Now probability sampling, the elements have a chance to be selected as subjects. Non-probability, no chance is associated with every element. Well, the elements do have a certain amount of chance. Not equal, not known, just chance. Although in simple random sampling, you can associate equal and known chance, but we are going to get into that detail later. Non-probability means that you cannot associate a chance. A particular element may be selected while other may not be selected. So in this particular session, we are going to talk about probability sampling. And in probability sampling, we can have simple random sampling. We can have stratified random sampling and we can have systematic sampling. So we are going to just focus on these three and in non-probability sampling we can have convenience sampling we can have judgment sampling and we can have quota sampling although we can have others as well like snowball sampling In these sessions, we are just going to focus on these. And before we move on to non-probability sampling, let's discuss probability sampling and we start with simple random sampling. Simple random sampling. And this is a type of probability sampling. Now, what do we mean by simple random sampling and what are the requirements? Now, in simple random sampling, we associate equal and known chance with every single element in the population to be selected as subject in the sample. Now, what do we mean by equal and known chance? Known means that you can calculate the chance that every single element will have. And that every element in the population will have an equal chance to be selected. Now, let me give you a very basic example. Let's say I'm teaching a class of 10 students. Now this 10 is my population. Why? Because these are the students that can be part of my sample. So every single individual that can be part of your sample is your population. So this or these 10 students are my population and I need to select only three. So my sample size requirement is three. Now, how do I select this three from this 10? The first and foremost 
that obviously is one of the mis biggest misconception in the mind of the students you have to have all the details of the elements in the population if you do not have the details how are you going to assess or how are you going to put in equal and known chance with every single element in the population to do simple random sampling you need to have all the details of every single element in the population by all the details i mean enough details so that you can access the element in the population in this case students so i need student id their name if required their email address so i can just select them and email them that they have been selected or their address or their phone number so i can access the students now in this case let's say i've got my 10 students so one here are the details two here are the details three here are the details four here are the details five and up until 10 i've got the details let's say in a word document or in an excel sheet now i need to select only three how do i select these three you cannot just say that okay i'll select one three and ten this is not random you might like okay for example you just saw one so you selected one or you just saw the name so you selected it there's a certain amount of bias in it so there is no equal and known chance associated with every element to do so we need random numbers from 1 to 10 and based on those random numbers we will have our selection so how do i generate these random numbers so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use a random number generator random number generator without repetition let's go here how many numbers multiple numbers how many let's say three minimum value one maximum ten and it is repeating so we are go to advanced mode allow duplicates no so look at this now four two ten so these are the random numbers so in this case i've got all the details in an excel sheet so i'm going to use four two and number 10 from those 10 students these are the three students that i'm going to select all these were in the list and i put in one to ten three numbers were required and the calculator gave me those three numbers it could have given me any number so there was an equal and known chance how do i say that it's equal just look at here look at this one here one divided by 10 multiplied by 100 so each one of the element has got 10 percent chance and if you just multiply this 10 into 10 you will have 100 that is 10 students so let's say i've got five students so one divided by five multiplied by 100 so 20 percent so each student has 20 percent chance to be selected as a subject similarly you can calculate the chance and each student has got 20 so it's equal chance so equal and known chance and this is how you select it now let's assume let me change the example and make it a bit more complex let's say i'm interested in studying servant leadership and organizational performance and i'm interested in studying this in let's say higher education so how do i do simple random sampling in this case in order to perform simple random sampling in a study of this nature where you've got Two variables or three variables or whatever the number of variables is in a particular setting let's say i'm doing it in higher education so what i need to do is first i need to have a complete list of staff or population that i'm targeting for my study is it academic staff so i need the list of academic staff if it's both academic and administration staff so i need the list of both admin and academic staff so once I've got the list, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, whatsoever, and let's say from 1 to 2,000. And normally, the sample size that is required for perception-based studies is between 200 to 500. 
So let's say I'm targeting around 300 students or rather 300 academics or staff from higher education. And I've got the list here from one to 2000. So let's generate how many numbers? 300 numbers. But that's the minimum sample size that I require. Do you think I will have 100% response rate? No. So instead of 300, I will generate 600 numbers, send the questionnaire to 600 people, and at least I expect 50% response rate. If I have more, I'll, that will be good. That is, this is your minimum sample size. So what you need to do is just simply come here. And the minimum is this, the maximum is let's say 2000. And I need how many numbers? I need 600 numbers. So from the Excel sheet that you've got, you will select these rows. So again, what you need is, so again, you need a list. And if you do not have a list, you cannot do your simple random sampling. I hope this session would have helped you understand how to perform simple random sampling. Thank you very much.